How do you tell if the limit exists? How do you tell if it doesn't exist? In this video, we're going to answer that question. So let's say if you want to find a limit as x approaches negative 3. And let's say this graph represents f of x. How do you determine if this limit exists or not? What you need to do is you need to check the left-sided limit as x approaches 3 from the left and also the right side as well as x approaches negative 3 from the right as indicated by this little positive sign. If these two one-sided limits are the same, then the limit exists. If they have different values, the limit does not exist. So at this point, we have a negative 3 value for x. As we approach it, as we follow the curve from the left side, notice that this has a y value of negative 4. So as x approaches 3 from negative 3 from the left, this is going to give us a y value of negative 4. And that's the answer for this one-sided limit. Now, what about the right side? As we follow the curve towards x equal negative 3 from the right side, we get to this point, which gives us a y value of negative 2. Notice that the two one-sided limits are not the same. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative 3 does not exist because the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit, they do not match. They are not equivalent to each other. Let's look at another example. Let's find a limit as x approaches negative 1. Does the limit exist or does it not exist? What would you say? Well, let's check the one-sided limits first. Let's see what happens as we approach negative 1 from the left side. As we, so here's negative 1. As we follow the curve from the left side, it gives us a y value of negative 1. Now, what about approaching negative 1 from the right side? So as we follow the curve towards an x value of negative 1 from the right side, we still get the same y value of negative 1. So the left side limit and the right side limit, they equal the same thing. Therefore, the limit exists, and it's equal to negative 1. So that's how you could tell if a limit exists or not. It's by checking the one side limits to see if they match. Let's try another problem. What is the limit as x approaches positive 3? Does it exist? Or would you say it does not exist? Well, let's check the one-sided limits. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, let's see what it equals and if it's the same as the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So here is positive 3, which is at the second vertical line. As we follow the curve from the left side, notice that it's going down towards negative infinity. Now, as we follow the curve to the right side of positive 3, the y value is going up to positive infinity. Negative infinity doesn't match with positive infinity, so the limit does not exist because those two are not the same. Now, let's consider an example with piecewise functions. So let's say we have f of x, and it's equal to 5x plus 1 when x is less than or equal to negative 2. And let's say that it's equal to x squared plus 1 when x is between negative 2 and 3. And the function is going to be equal to 2x plus 4 when x is equal to or greater than 3. So let's say we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 2 
of this piecewise function? Does the limit exist? Well, let's check the left-sided limits, the left side and the right side as well. So let's see what happens as we approach negative 2 from the left. As we approach negative 2 from the left, which part of the piecewise function should we use? Should we use 5x plus 1 or x squared plus 1? What would you say? So if we have a number line, and let's say this is negative 2, if we want to approach it from the left side, we need to pick a value less than negative 2. This could be negative 3, negative 4. So that would incorporate this section. That would be values less than negative 2. So we would have to use 5x plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with negative 2 using the 5x plus 1 expression. So it's going to be 5 times negative 2 plus 1, and that is negative 10 plus 1, which is negative 9. Now, let's evaluate the right side of the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So as we approach negative 2 from the right using a number line, we need to pick values greater than negative 2. So we're going to use this section where we're between negative 2 and 3. So x squared plus 1, we're going to replace x with negative 2 and add 1 to it. So negative 2 squared is positive 4 plus 1 is 5. As we could see, these two are not the same. So because the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right, we could say that the limit as x approaches negative 2 does not exist because the left-sided and the right-sided limits, they don't match. Now, what about the limit as x approaches 3 of the piecewise function f of x? Does that limit exist? Well, let's look at the left side and the right side. As we approach positive 3 from the left, which part of the piecewise function should we use? x squared plus 1 or 2x plus 4. To the left of 3, we're using values smaller than 3, like 2.9, 2.95. That's between negative 2 and 3. So we're going to use x squared plus 1. So this is going to be 3 squared plus 1. 3 squared is 9, plus 1, that's 10. Now, as we approach 3 from the right side, we're dealing with numbers greater than 3. So we would use 2x plus 4. So this is going to be 2 times 3 plus 4. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10. Now the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit are the same. So therefore, the limit does exist, and it's equal to 10. So that's how you could tell if a limit exists or not. It's by checking the one-sided limits. You want to make sure the left side and the right side limits are the same, then you know the limit exists. If they're not the same, the limit does not exist. Now for those of you who want more example problems on limits, or if you want to get a head start on topics like derivatives or integration, which you'll learn later in calculus, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. Now for those of you who want access to my calculus playlist, you can find it at my website video-tutor.net